get cozy everybody because today we'll be playing a game called Cupid. Wait, why am I here? Uh, why am I here? How do I go back? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, this game was requested by your mom loser. <laughs> You might not be able to YouTube this, but it's worth playing in a good mood. I'm always in a bad mood. I don't know, man. Mature filter off. Start. Uh, let's see. I love you. Really? <laughs> I don't even know you. I love you. I love you. I love you. There's no need to explain. It's only natural. No, it's not. I need explanation. I need things that make sense instead of just spouting nonsense. A mother loves her daughter more than anything in the world. Are you sure about that? Because there have been cases where mothers have killed their own children. Just saying. My poor child. How much did they hurt you this time? Hmm? How much did you suffer? Hmm? <laughs> did they kick you and wound you when you declined? Hmm? Did they blame you for being too friendly? Did they laugh at your face when you begged them to stop? Ah. Yeah. Serve your right for being the brainless slut you are. Ooh. Okay. You deserve that pain. I thought you loved me, mother. Savor it. No, mother. Rejoice in it. What? Mother, this is not a good lesson to learn. It is your penance. Your punishments for not listening to your mother. I warned you, didn't I? There is no one else who understands you more than me. No one will protect you but me. No one will love you but me. After all, how could anybody love something so monstrous like you? You gaslighting me? Don't cry, my darling. Shush, it's all right. If the world wishes you dead, I promise you this. Your mother will always be by your side. Priest. My goodness, child, what happened? Holy shit, dude, what happened to you? A girl cowered behind the door of the church, her clothes soaked by the rain. Her legs were covered in dirt and blood. She lifted her head upon hearing the priest's voice and stared at him with blank eyes. The priest rushed forward to help her up. My child, what happened to you? He ushered her to a pew. Pew, pew. <laughs> Easy now, lean on my arm. The girl did not speak at all despite his questions on her welfare. Thankfully, she did not seem to be hurt anywhere else apart from the deep wound on her leg. But the fear in her glassy eyes were palpable. She flinched every time he touched her. The priest brought out some clean cloth and empty septic. He wrapped her shivering shoulders in old robes. Did somebody hurt you? Were you attacked? You can tell me. We shall call the constable and have them face justice. The girl didn't say anything. Constable? So I'm guessing this is uh, made from England? <laughs> I don't know. From Great Britain? Uh, who says constable except for those guys, right? <laughs> The girl didn't say anything. It's fine. The priest looked at the dirty, disheveled girl. Even with all the muddy grime smeared across her face, he couldn't deny that she was absolutely beautiful. How old was she? Sixteen? Twenty? Her face was so young, her eyes captivating. When he realized his own thoughts, he steered his mind towards other matters. You don't have to say anything if you're uncomfortable. No matter what happened, know that you're safe here. For now, bum bum bum. Nobody can hurt you anymore. For now. <laughs> yeah, the shook, what? The shook his head. He shook his head, upset at how this young girl seemed to carry bruises too easily, too conveniently. It was obvious that her physical wounds were the last, were the least of the damages she came. She carried, oh, carried. I thought it looked like came word. He sighed as he finished treating her wound. What could he say to comfort her? Would she even believe him? You must think that the world is a cruel place. Yes, it is. And it is. It is. One cannot deny the very depths of cruelty we humans inflict on each other. Please do not lose hope on the goodness of people. It is there, I promise you. What? As there are people who harm, there will be people who love. The girl fidgeted. Why did the girl say, it is there? She mumbled to herself, seemed to chew her tongue before she sputtered out the words. Holy shit, that would bleed. There's gonna be a lot of blood gushing out from your mouth if you chewed your own tongue. God. Will God love me even though I am a sinner? The priest beamed. Of course, my child. 
He sat closer to her, his heart beating with hope. The years of spiritual training were for this, was it not? For her. To save the wayward sheep caught in the brambles. To care for a dejected soul in need of guidance, protection, and love. Love. What are we but pieces of coal to be polished to be gems in His grace? God's love is unconditional, enduring, and pure. It is all you need. My darling. What? He drew closer. Why are you calling this unknown woman my darling? Even if you are hurt, God's love will heal you. God's love will provide. God cannot protect me. What? What? With this utterance, the priest came to his senses. In his frenzy for gospel, he did not notice his hand on the girl's thigh. Oh, planted lazily as if he had been there all this time. Holy shit. He snatched it away in shock. When did he... The priest stood up. The sudden blood rush made him feel sick. I must be unwell. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Was she apologizing to him or to someone else? Her hair hid her face innocently, but the shadows on its surface made his insides coil as he stared at her. This feeling. I'm having a boner. It was fear. Oh, right. Yeah, that too. I'm sorry. She repeated this phrase over and over. After a while, the priest gathered himself. He wiped sweat off his brow. You are not to be blamed for this. I will... The priest cleared his throat. I will have one of the sisters assist you. Yeah, that's a good idea. In the meantime, please rest. With this, the man left. The girl remained seated on the pew, pew, her head bent forward. As the priest's footsteps faded away, the entire church fell into silence. Even the rain stopped. What's up with that? So, uh, what next? Okay. She opened her mouth. No, I know. If I may say my piece, surely. Surely what? Yeah, yeah, mother. But he is so very kind. Haven't you learned the lesson, idiot? I fear for your safety. Save here. Oop. Return. Haven't you learned your lesson, idiot? You truly are an idiot. Haven't you learned your lesson? You are injured because of your own doing. And you dare tempt fate again? I'm sorry, mother. I just thought it'd be better to eat and sleep first before I left. Please don't be angry. Uh, another? Okay. Then stop your disobedience. If you do not want me to be angry, then don't give me a reason to be. Haven't I told you time and again that the world is full of beasts? If only you were not like this. You saw the way the priest looked at you, didn't you? And still, you insist on staying. Where is your head? On my neck. It's attached properly. Thank you for asking. I understand. I shall leave at once. How am I going to mind you like this? You attract so much misfortune everywhere you go. This is all your fault. Again, save. Wait, just six sa- oh. Ooh, I'd be pissed if there were only like six save slots. Like, why would you do that? Why would you limit my fucking save slots? Give me my save slots, you slut. <laughs> this is all your fault. Why must you be like this? You are a blight to my heart. I'm sorry. It is all my fault. The girl sat in silence. Mother was right after all. She was always right. Everything was her fault. Her fist shook with a mixture of fear and conviction. She had to do penance. Mother, give me strength. There is something I wish to do. The girl rose from the pew, pew, pew. What, what, what? In front of her was the altar, and on top of the altar was an ornately decorated cross. It was as white as her head, and the tip of the cross had been crafted such that it was razor sharp. She whispered a prayer, the same one she has taught herself ever since she could speak. A prayer of contrition, of penance, and sorrow. Lord, have mercy on me. A poor, unfortunate soul, extend your mercy on my heart, so I may not sin no more, and yet somehow I keep on sinning. Why is that? She knelt in front of the giant cross staring at the deity's face, contorted in torment and agony. Pain. Pain was good. Mm, I don't know. S I guess some people like pain. <laughs> but let's not go to that fucking topic. Pain washed away your sins and made you pure. Don't tell me. You're quite sure you're doing this? The girl's arm trembled ever so slightly. What other way is there for me to atone? She picked up the cross... Oh, my darling daughter, mother is so proud of you. 
Slowly, she brought the sharp end close to her face. So close that it hovered just above her left eye. <gasps> oh, God. Is she going to do the thing? And with a final gasp of breath, she... Ooh. I don't like things that involve injuring the eyes. It gives me a sick feeling. Chapter 1. The Star and the Rose. Wait, there are so many other things. Choices left, though. Oh, my God. What happened to you? A scruffy young girl in tattered clothes peered through the open gates of Chateau de Semain, where an afternoon party was being held. People from high class estates strolled around the manicured gardens, chatting and laughing. There were beautiful men and women clad in silk and velvet, their necks adorned with pearls and jewels. A variety of food was displayed on the tables. The girls stared at the exquisitely arranged plates. She hadn't eaten properly for the past few days. Are you hungry, child? We must not linger. Where is the save? There you go. Are you hungry, child? Yes, mother. Don't you worry. Mother will provide. You do not need those high-class foods anyway. They will upset your stomach. Now we saved long enough. Let us leave. Surely we can look around for a bit. It's a little early. There was something else that called to her. Other than the party itself. She walked to and fro from the gates, peeking at the crowd. Despite mother's urgings to leave, the girl dared to stay a little longer. Just a tiny glance would be enough. The girl smiled at the thought of him. Who? Who's that? The owner of the chateau is the Marquis de Bibi. How do you pronounce that? I don't know how do you pronounce that. <laughs> I'm sorry. His charity was well known in town. Oh, charity. <laughs> <laughs> I said Cherry. His Cherry was well known in town. He was kind to the townspeople from the lowliest beggar to the common town folk. Parties of the noble born were usually private affairs, exclusive to the other nobles. But the Marquis parties were always open to the public. She would sell roses to the manor sometimes. Whenever the Marquis was around to meet her, he always handed her food and extra coins. But more than that, the fact that the Marquise acknowledged her presence. To a poor and forgotten rose girl like her, it was more than she could ask for. This man you're looking for. The rose girl flinched. You are enamored by him? Hmm. He's the same as everyone. Same. It would be funny if the choices didn't matter. Like, <laughs> you just wasted your time, fella. He's the same as everyone. You really are stupid. How many times do I have to tell you? They are all the same. Greedy, insatiable, may not be for you. St stop. I'm getting offended here. I mean, you're right, but I'm offended. <laughs> but for something else. But he is a kind man, mother. Don't let his kindness fool you. Sweetest tongue hides sharpest tooth, child. She bit her lip. Why do you even bother with him? He makes me feel that there are still good people in the world, mother. Ah, oh, yeah, another. Oh, no, God! Oh, there you are. Save here. Oh, my God, so many toys have to go back. What is this? Quick? There are no more good people in the world, child. There are no more good people in the world, child. The world has run out of them. All that is left are manipulatives of souls who appear kind on the outside. Sounds like you, mother. Because they need other people to survive. Ultimately, they only care for themselves. Don't you think I'm a good person, mother? Of course I do. But say first. Number two. Holy crap. Get used to this, folks. <laughs> of course I do. Of course, child. You are special. Haven't I raised you as such? I have tried my best, my dearest. Yes, mother. You keep me right. I love you. The girl stared at her shoes and looked around for a bit, hoping for a glass before she left. Whenever she was hungry, it seemed her feet always took her here to him. A habit? Nevertheless, there was no harm in looking. She would never enter the Marquis' world. The rose girl searched the crowd. There he was, entertaining his guests in the midst of the party. He turned his eyes in her direction and offered a, a nod. Oh, her heart skipped a bait. A light, warm feeling filled her, aching to drinking a cup of hot soup. As he went on to entertain his guest, the rose girl smiled to herself, content to take her leave. 
My, is this creature deaf as well as dumb? Poor thing. Little girl. A voice called to the rose girl. She gasped. Somebody else had noticed her presence. She picked up her feet and scuttered to the exit. No, no, my dear. Poor little creature. Don't run away. Charlotte, she stinks. Don't touch her. You have to crash the party, little urchin. You hungry? Her stomach gave a low grumble. She was always hungry, it seemed, no matter how much or how little she ate. Encouraged by the kindness of the Marquise had shown her, the girl teetered towards the table. What are you selling? Look at this poor creature. Is she selling roses? They're, these are all ugly ones. But not as appalling as the rag she is covering herself in. Are you trying your best to be this repulsive? Ah, oh, that's so sad. Don't be mean, Antoinette. Perhaps it's the common fashion, don't judge. They laugh while gawking at her and her wares. Oh my, she only has one eye. Ghastly. But strange, isn't it? It's like you can't look away. The other lady nodded her head. Like those freaks at the carnivals, you mean? Exactly. She's darling in her own dirty, monstrous way. Aw, oh, poor, poor Rose. Maybe we can keep it. Hello, do you want some bread, urchin? Well, speak up. Maybe her tongue is short. Add that to the list of her sterling qualities. If we want the food, let us hear you speak. Yes, madame. What? Yes, madame, I would be grateful. One of the ladies clapped in mockery at her reply. Oh, she talks. The ladies had it heard the bread. But it was snatched away before her fingers grazed it. Eh, uh, eh. Uh. Not before you dance for us first. Oh, make her do a handstand. I've seen a street performer do that once. Quite marvelous. Now I'd like to see that. This part is getting quite boring. Well, come on, little freak. Dance for your food. The girl looked at the beautiful, cruel faces of the women. The look on them. It was familiar. A burning desire to hurt something simply because they could. Before they touched her and hurt her, they had that look burning in their eyes. Oh, look at what you did, Claudette. She shivered like a leaf, poor thing. The lady laughed as she spoke. I didn't do anything. She should be grateful for even offering her this much. The girl faltered. Mother, please save me. Mother. Did I tell you to leave? Did I tell you people are cruel? Let's save here. Did I tell you to leave? Did I tell you to leave, insolent child? Now you call for me. Try to deal with this situation yourself. You have put yourself in this position anyway. I hope you can learn your lesson. Hey there. A child's voice called out from behind her. It belonged to a girl around seven with chubby cheeks and a curious look in her eyes. So, uh, is that how you spell curious? I'm not sure. I'm confused now. Curious look in her eyes. She wore an old blue dress somewhat patched at the corners but kept clean and tidy. She was not rich but she had an air as if she owned the ground she stood on. Huh? Another commoner? This part is absolutely teeming with them. The Marquis love these things. Maybe I should get myself one too. Do you think it's, it's fashionable abroad in his birth country, I mean? Persia? No, no, I heard he was from India. Isn't he a bastard son of a Greek queen? Goodness, that was just a rumor. I could barely pronounce his Christian name, though. He really has to change it to something more acceptable. Who knows what kind of demons he might attract with such a blasphemous name. Aha, it must be why all these nasty, horrid little creatures fuck around him. Hmm. Demon or not, I'm not forgiven if he kisses my hand. The ladies laughed. You, cheeky tramp, aren't you shameless? Don't lie, we all know why you're here. The ladies gossip among themselves, openly ignoring the girl. The young girl took the sliding with a shrug. She approached the table and asserted her presence. What you doing? Don't take a hint, do they? Throw something shiny, it might distract them. Hey, you've been holding that breath for a long time. Aren't you gonna give it to her? She pointed at the shabby rose vendor. Why do you care? Do you want the bread for yourself? I know, maybe you should toss the bread and see if they'll fight for it. The ladies laughed again. The girl's brows furrowed in understanding. The next thing everyone knew, she had swiped the bread from the woman's hand. What? How rude! Horrible, filthy girl, give that back. The girl sniffed the piece of bread and nibbled at the surface. Oh, yummy, it's so warm. She shoved the bread in the urchin's face. The scrumptious scent of bread flooded the rose girl's nose. Lick it. The sugared butter tastes good. Oh, God. Don't forget to stretch, boys. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, 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 that felt good. 
No, you devil child, give that back. The urchin licked it. Sweetness coated her tongue. She stood there, squeezing the taste, wishing it to last. The girl grinned at her, and she couldn't help but grin back. Sorry, here you go, it's all yours. Ugh, disgusting. Like we're going to eat anything that's been in your filthy mouths? Wow, so this is ours now? You ladies are so nice. Cheeky little brat, I'll have you thrown out of this party. I'll have you... A young man strode to the commotion, and the ladies curtsied self-consciously. The rose girl's mouth welled up. A sweet flowery taste filled her tongue, like jasmine tea spiked with wine. The girl swallowed. What a strange effect he had. Ladies? Oh, Lord Gulim. Uh, uh, Gulim? Lord Guile, I don't know how it's pronounced. I just came to check in on my lovely guests. Is everything all right? Are you enjoying yourselves? The rose girl cowered behind the little girl. One of the ladies flicked her fire with obvious annoyance. Well, these little beasts have been harassing us. Yes, my lord. We were just minding our own business when this girl swept the food off our table. Horrible. Simply horrible. The girl stuck out her tongue at them. One of the ladies wailed childishly. See? Look at that. It's absolutely monstrous how these children act around all adults now. Why call them Rich Lady 1 when you can call them Karen 1, 2, 3? <laughs> there is no respect, Monsieur. Yeah, I don't know. I worry for the next generation. Oh, Charlotte, don't cry. We would all breathe a little easier if those children were sent underway, my lord. Yeah, who knows what kind of mischief they might be up to. Oh? What if they're here to steal our jewelry? In fact, I think my pocket watch is missing. No, how unfortunate. It is, Mr. Re Messire. It's unfortunate how you allow your important guests to be treated this way. Please deal with these vermin. Throw them out now. Oh, my sweet ladies, I am stricken with grief at your misfortunes. Allow me to offer my heartfelt apologies. Unfortunately, this child is in fact my important guest today. Meanwhile, you ladies are, sad to say, mere gatecrashers. Excuse me? Madame Charlotte of... Montpellier? I don't remember sending you an invite. Save for you, Lady Antoinette of Renef and Lady Claudette of Lyon. Most people I invite are huge patrons of music. That is why they are here today. They came to listen to Mademoiselle Catherine Louise Perderdere. She's the seven-year-old piano prodigy who played for the Queen last summer. The man pointed at the girl busy chewing her half of the bread. The rose girl just stared at the unfolding situation. Well, that's... But I am sure you were aware of that, yes? No matter, I am always happy to see you, ladies. It is my pleasure to have you here. But I hope you don't mind giving some of the food away to my town's people. That is why I keep my gates open. My servers are instructed to serve anyone who passes by, not just my guests. But... Oh, and don't fret, darlings. There will be plenty more food left for you. The ladies reddened in embarrassment. Excuse me? The Marquise walked up to the two girls. The rose girl's heart beat so fast it made her dizzy. She had never been this close to him. Her stomach chatted in knots as mother's voice screamed in her ears to leave. Miss Catherine, your father's been looking for you. It's almost time for your performance. The girl looked up at the Marquise and did a little curtsy. My apologies, sire. I didn't mean to cause such a clatter. Gilly chuckled. I saw the whole thing, little miss. You put those ladies in their place. They were being mean to her. Guillermo, uh, Guillermo del Toro narrowed, her eyes, <laughs> narrowed his eyes at this quiet, at this quiet girl. She had bed her basket of roses. I've seen you before, haven't I? The rose girl nodded and made a curtsy. I deliver roses to your house sometimes, sire. Yes, I remember. The rose girl blushed. I love your roses, by the way. They stay fresh longer than they should. You've tended to them with love. Thank you, sire. Do you have a name, young lady? I... Erm... Um, what's the matter? It is alright, you don't have to force yourself. Let's call her Rosa. Huh? Rosa, it fits her. I think she forgot her name or she lost it. Uh, okay. The Marquise nodded. Indeed, names are quite flimsy things. Are you alright with that, Rosa? Yeah. Come on, Rosa. You don't watch me play, right? I... Her eyes darted from the girl to the Marquise. Oh, Lord Gilly doesn't mind. Gilly? He's really nice to me and my family. 
and he helps the people around town too, so he won't throw you out. The Marquis held his right hand in the air as if swearing an oath. I won't. See, come on, you're invited now. You're my special guest. There's plenty of food inside too, Rosa. Please help yourself. Thank you, sire. Rosa is coming. Yay. But then Catherine's cheerful face broke into a frown. Actually, the girl looked up to the Marquise. I ran away because I am a bit nervous. Oh? I've only ever played my piano in private gatherings inside houses and such. Now there's a whole bunch of people. Catherine scratched her head. What if I make a mistake? Papa will be very upset. The Marquise knelt in front of Catherine and patted her shoulders reassuringly. Don't worry, little miss. If you play the Dutchers' audience's hearts, any mistake won't matter. Do you understand? Catherine stared up at him. Not really. The man chuckled. How about this? Imagine everyone in the audience is asleep. Except for one. That one special person is listening to you. So perform as if you want to make that person smile. Gilliblah held Catherine's clear young eyes in his gaze. Do well, my lady. He gave her hand a little peck. It was covered with sticky sugar and breadcrumbs. Catherine blushed embarrassed by the state of her fingers. Somebody special. The young man led her to the stage. Are you ready? Yep. Catherine trudged up the wooden podium and walked towards the middle of the stage. The crowd shattered died down. She curtsied in front of her audience and waved to her father. She sat down in front of the piano admiring the cream and ebony keys underneath her fingers. Her own piano was broken and beaten. Father had sold his horses for it. The A3 key never played and the strings would creak when it was cold, but it never failed her. She knew the keys like they were her own fingers. She whispered to the new piano softly, as if coaxing a beautiful, untamed animal. Let's be friends, okay? She saw Rosa at the far end of the podium, watching her diligently. The Marquis sat in his chair in front of the audience. He gave the girl an encouraging nod. A song that would make someone smile, huh? Her face reddened as she broke into a shy grin. There was a renewed vigor in her blood. She could hear the keys calling out to her. Somebody special. She placed her fingers on the keys. She began to play. Sorry, I was just admiring the piano music. At the ring of the first few notes, it became apparent to the audience that this girl was exceptional. Here was a little girl, barely tall enough to reach the pedals of the piano, playing as if she owned it. There were times she'd miss a note or two, but that didn't matter. She played the song wholeheartedly, and everyone could tell it as so. Her skillful fingers caressed the keys as if she was making a flower crown, carefully weaving the pedals. She knew the correct way to tie the leaves so they wouldn't tear like all smart little girls did. As the piano sang under her hands, Catherine disappeared right in front of the audience's eyes. She was just a vision after all, somebody leading them down a dream. A dream of a garden, the springtime, the shade of a tree on a windy day. The couples in the audience tightened their grip on the hands of their partners. Some closed their eyes and let the music saturate their soul. Sweet memories of youth, a first love, the yawn of a newborn. Rosa's eyes shone as she stared at Catherine. Her heart was captured by this image of her. A young girl swaying her head to the music, smiling as the notes poured out to her. She couldn't take her eye away from Catherine's glowing face. Was this happiness? Was this love? She looked like she was in love. And she was, wasn't she? In her innocence, she was still in love with life. In love with her family, with her pets, in love with every new discovery. She was full of hope. It was a bittersweet feeling for Rosa. A happy teardrop rolled down her cheek. She wanted to warm herself in that hope, if she could. In the others, Guillermo del Toro and Catherine's father sat beside each other. Sire Perda, your daughter is amazing. She is, isn't she? I mean, part of my arrogance, my liege. I'm a very proud father, you see. Not part of necessary, sire. 
has she found a sponsor yet? The Duke of Versailles once spoke to me about it, about it, but we have not made any arrangements. Then I must steal her away as soon as possible. Sire, I'd like to be Catherine's primary sponsor if that is all right with you. Why, sire? And to further cement my status, that piano she is playing right now, it is hers. I've bought it for her. Francois's eyes widened in astonishment. That is Francois Glub. Gl gulped. <laughs> Glubbed. That is beyond generous, sire. Guillermo smiled. I am aware it's quite bold of me to ask you outright, but I felt compelled to grab the opportunity. After all, the Duke might offer you an extravagant piano plated in gold. In that case, I have no choice but to humbly concede. What? I'm kidding. The Duke of Versailles is the worst miss miser you will ever meet. Okay. The men chuckled. Of course, I shall be paying for musical tutoring as required, along with an ample stipend to accommodate your family. You don't have to look so surprised, Monsieur Perdi. Your daughter is a star. Geniuses like her only appear once or twice a century. There is no doubt in my mind that she will succeed. Thank you deeply, my liege. Let me remind you, this generosity is without charge. Her tutoring will be done at my house. I want to monitor her progress. Apart from that, I'd very much like Catherine to visit the chateau and play from time to time. Music is one of my true passions. Her presence would benefit my mood tenfold. Of course, sir, that is a small price to pay for all your offers. On the contrary, Messiah. You don't have to decide now. Kindly think about it. Thank you, my lord. Sire G, Sire G. After the performance, Catherine and Rosa went to the Marquis' garden to play. Frank Swan G lingered on their table, sorting out the details of Catherine's further education. Emile Perrin wandered around the crowd searching for a familiar face. She arrived halfway through Catherine's performance just in time to gush at her little sister's applause. Unfortunately, she couldn't find her father in the crowd. When she finally caught sight of the back of his head, she approached him hastily. Oh, father, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Emily stopped as she saw the man her father was talking to. It was none other than the Marquis himself. She curtsied. My lord, pardon my intrusion, I didn't realize. Gilji guy smiled at her kindly. You are free to intrude any time, my lady. <laughs> Why do I talk like this? It's so funny. Emily smiled back, just, just as the rumor said. The Marquis was easy on the eyes. To whom do I owe the pleasure of your acquaintance? This is my eldest daughter, Emily. Pardon me for not introducing her sooner. It charmed. G Guy offered her a seat. Emily sat down across the main man. Well, it seems the talent and good looks run in the family. Frank's one scratch his head. Yes, my daughters are my pride and joy. Thankfully, they both took after their mother. Surely not, Monsieur Petit. I see earnest strength in her eyes. That much she has taken after you. Emily snorted at such cliche words. Her father was clearly basking in the compliments. If this really was the famous G guy the rumors talked about, then he wasn't exactly much of a charmer, was he? He was no troubadour, nor was he a poet. She didn't know what all the fuss was about. The ladies in the house she worked for could not seem to stop talking about this man. Admittedly, there was something morbidly curious about the way he looked at people. He's a vampire. <laughs> he came up vague. Wait, is he? He came up vague and distracted, seemed incapable to offer words beyond what were expected of him. I'm pleased to have finally met you, sire. I, I heard a lot about you in my travels. All good things, I hope. Oh, shit. Yeah, I have to stop here. I gotta prepare for work to... <laughs> How long is this game? So, yeah. Interesting so far. Jesus Christ, that in intro was like, holy crap, that was uncoverable. She was almost graped. And she stabbed her own eye? Ouch. I hate anything that has to do with eyes. So this is Cupid. Why Cupid? If you want to try the game for yourself, the link's are in the description. That is all for today. Stay safe and take care of yourselves.